Good evening, Natural Grandma viewers. Uh, this little patch here is cuckaburs, cuckaburs, cuckaburs. We got the shadow of the Kubota here affecting the viewing, looks like. But anyways. They are uh, full as ticks. I don't know if you can see the belly on that 206. We just put them in here. This this is a very fertile area. It's an area where hay has been fed. And that's why all them cuckleburs are there. Thistles and cuckleburs have come into this farm with hay. When I was a kid 50 years ago, we didn't have cuckleburs on this farm. We didn't have sunflowers on this farm. And if we observed one, we cut it off. So that's how that was handled. But as you can see, they are full. I was checking on maybe moving them again tonight, but they will probably eat a few more of them cuckoo leaves and down in those cuckoo I'm quite satisfied that there is more grass because they always eat the tender best stuff first and where they can get to the easiest. Hot water. Step over it. Let's see how much forage you have left. They are telling me how full they are by the way they're breathing. You know. <sighs> kind of like you do after Sunday dinner at Grandma's. Put them in here yesterday morning. It's just a small area that was just really overgrown the grass with waist high and couple birds up in it just thought we ought to nip it off yeah see there's still lots of grass down in these couple birds keep them at least tonight we'll give them some grass tomorrow they be leaving this bigger field that they've been in right here's the chicken following down there and then down to the water tank. They're going to go through them trees down there and start up through an area that hadn't had cattle on it, I think, for 100 days at least. So we'll slow them down and do a little bit of shredding down. But see how they've taken an old velvet leaf right on down. And they've eaten a lot of different plants out of here. Cuckabers are just a little too too far along for them to I can see they're starting to put burrs on there. But a week ago they probably would have stripped them right off. And probably come in here, clip this stuff off. Got our little Yearlings in here, they're not quite a year old, about 11 months old. And we got seven of these bigger girls here that we got in the calves in another month. Out of a kit feral bull that get himself raised at Cheyenne Wells. I think they're pretty nice, they've really got a big old belly on them. Made kind of right. Aren't you there, 190? Made about right for grass genetics. She is pretty. High in the back, long, slender neck, big old belly. So those little yearlings there. They're nice. That one's a little finer bone, but look, she's still got that grass belly. And it is full. Aren't you there, 222? Your belly is full. Just the way Papa likes you. 190. Can't read your number there, honey. 191. But the animals work for us. So this area was overgrown, gonna be kind of wasted by, you know, fall. A lot.
lot of that area out there where the chickens have run and everything is shorter. And we'll leave that. It's already starting to stockpile for fall is what we're doing with that. So this year, well, we had an inch and a half last night and we had 2.3 inches a week ago. So this is August the uh, 20th or something like that. So, Cucklebur Green is a pretty color, but I'm glad my whole farm don't look like that. And if I'd put just, you know, if I'd wanted to tighten these up just a little bit more, I probably could have made them eat them. But that would have, you know, we're on a, it's 36 hours they've been in here. I just had a certain area, it just goes past that little tree right down there and then cuts across over towards that brown. And, Follows this three wire up here. We got we got grass everywhere. Certainly no reason to slow your animals down very much, leave them in any place where they shouldn't be. You see how tender and everything this was, and they took it right to the ground. And you just can't help that. You got different areas in your field, and on a 36-hour move, they're just going to eat it differently. Tighten that down to 12 hour moves and, and uh, that over there is chicken grass. Gonna have a, an awesome sunset, natural grandma. There's the hoop house up there in the old barn and egg trailer. We got our Kubota back, so good to, good to have it. Nothing that $725 wouldn't fix. Don't hear nobody asking for nothing more to eat. They just happy to be breathing. Aren't you there, 190? You can come up here and let me brag on you some more. You are a pretty ragged red Angus heifer. She will be two. Uh, 191. She'll be two September the 20th. She was born two years ago when Laura was at Greg Judy's grazing school at Clark. 190 and 191 both calved that while she was gone for that two days. And they're out of a cows, 190 and 191 are out of cows that carry the Mush Rush brand. So they were born on the Mush Rush farm. And she's out of Triton, a Mush Rush ASR that we like a lot. So those are daughters of him right there. So. And we could go looking for other breeds, but um, it's kind of hard to beat a red Angus. It's going to perform well, either for a, our grass genetic program and putting them on grass, or you know we're we're moderate size, but we still got enough frame that somebody would put steers out of them into the, in the feedlot. So pretty green, pretty red, pretty fine day to be alive at Natural Grandma, especially if you're a heifer in the breeding program. We give them pretty good care. Keep them gaining. After all, they're eating for two. Well, good day, Natural Grandma of yours. As we like to say at Natural Grandma, we wish you were having this good a day.